Thank you very much, and I'm very happy to be invited uh, to this uh, session, to this symposium by Thermo Fisher, and talk about how genomic uh, profiling, especially done by uh, NGS, is uh, driving precision oncology. So I would like to start with a quick introduction into the topic, uh, and then we will hear more details uh, about specific applications and specific tumor types as well uh, of, of uh, genomic biomarker testing in today's clinics. So first of all, um, if we talk about precision oncology, um, just to be on the same page, uh, we talk about having a patient population um, that uh, a few decades ago, uh, patient population with the same indication would have been treatment with, uh, with the same drug and uh, response rates were generally quite low. So most of the patients responded either not very well or not at all. So now in the era of precision oncology, the idea is that we stratify this patient population based on predictive biomarkers in order to group them uh, into, into different subpopulations that will each then receive a treatment tailored specifically to their genetic uh, makeup. So a good example of this, and actually we will hear more about this in the talk uh, by Dr. Fernandez, um, is non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, non-small cell lung cancer has been pioneering the field of precision oncology, as we all know, where nowadays for uh, lung adenocarcinomas, there are a large amount of targeted therapies available, each dependent on specific uh, biomarkers being present in, these, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the tumor. Um, but not only in non-small cell lung cancer, but in fact, in many other cancer types, do we see a uh, very similar development with more and more biomarker-driven targeted therapies entering the market uh, on a monthly and yearly basis. This is also reflected by the fact that today, the majority of ongoing oncology trials are actually biomarker driven, as we can see here. Uh, this was not the case two decades ago where we had less than 20% of uh, ongoing clinical trials uh, dependent on specific biomarkers. Um, if we look at specific tumor types, we can actually see that, that, that all cancer types uh, show a very similar development in terms of development of targeted therapies. So every year, more trials that are being started are biomarker driven. So of course, this calls for a, for a, for a high demand of accurate technologies that allow us to comprehensively profile the, uh, the uh, genetic makeup of uh, a tumor. Um, the method of choice nowadays to do this is next generation sequencing. In the past, uh, we had other technologies such as Sanger sequencing um, that allowed us to do single marker tests. The same uh, goes for immunohistochemistry and, and fluorescence in situ hybridization, two technologies that are still very widely uh, used in, in, in routine and still have their place in routine. They are fast, they are cheap, yet they yield relatively little information. That's why now in the era of multi-biomarker testing, we required technologies that are able to assess uh, uh, many biomarkers in one test. Um, regarding next generation sequencing, currently uh, also uh, recommended by the ESMO guidelines are multi-gene NGS panels in contrast to whole exome or even whole genome sequencing, which will yield a lot of information, but it's expensive, the analysis takes time, and most of the information is probably not relevant for therapy decision making. While uh, uh, targeted gene panels, they are fast, uh, they allow multi-marker testing, uh, and even tumor agnostic markers such as tumor mutation burden and, uh, and uh, microsatellite instability. And this is also reflected by the fact that based on, uh, on a current databases that harbor most of the uh, targetable mutations, uh, show that in fact, currently there's only around 60 to 70 actionable genes that really have a therapy associated with them. 
And if we look at ongoing clinical trials, we have around 500 to 600 genes across all solid tumors that are somewhat associated with a clinical trial. Again, speaking for the fact that smaller gene-based panels are in fact sufficient in our current daily routine. Uh, so now the question is also about having very specific, tumor-specific NGS panels or going very broad. Both approaches have advantages and disadvantages. A broad approach has the advantages that we can use one uh, assay for all tumor types. Uh, we can get additional information such as tumor mutational burden or microsatellite instability in the future, hopefully also information on homologous recombination deficiency. But they are expensive to do, have relatively long turnaround time, may be more difficult to interpret due to a lot, uh, the presence of a lot of variants of unknown significance, and they may require more tissue than smaller tumor-specific panels, which are in general uh, uh, quicker to do, so they have rapid turnaround time. There are now automated NGS systems on the market that allow small panel sequencing in as little as one day. They require little input, um, are focused on actionable mutations only, and are in general more cost efficient. However, such panels likely require more frequent redesign in order to include the latest uh, developments in the, uh, in the uh, uh, targeted therapy market that is coupled to new biomarkers. And if you want to assess uh, markers such as TMB or MSI, we may have to run additional uh, assays. So taken together, um, if a lab is thinking about establishing next generation sequencing in their routine, there are many factors to consider. And in fact, that should be discussed between the laboratory and the uh, clinicians in order to find a common ground and find out what are the current needs also from the clinician side and then choose the right technology to fit that need. Um, factors such as turnaround time, of course, uh, ease of use. So how much do I need to invest in infrastructure? Um, uh, how much personnel do I need? Uh, cost, uh, meaning is my test going to be reimbursed by the health insurance system in my country? Sample requirements uh, can my assay, my test handle all the different sample types that I get. Uh, can it handle core needle biopsies, cytological specimen, liquid biopsies? Of course, is it sensitive and specific enough? And again, the content of the assay, do I want to go broad? Do I want to have tumor specific panel? And with this, I would like to now hand over to a more detailed talk uh, regarding biomarker testing in non-small cell lung cancer by Dr. Fernandez, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Yerman, for your presentation and for setting up the background uh, uh, around precision medicine. 